I was watching something on the TV and I saw this type of uh, way, type of effect, which was a letter, an older paper, which had some script on it, some text, and it was highlighted by a line. So I thought this was a good idea to remake and then show you the example of how you do this so you can get some additional ideas of, let's say you are reading or writing a book and you are kind of filming yourself from a distance and then you get this close-up shot on that book you are reading or writing and uh, you can use this effect then to highlight different sentences and then you can get that final close-up shot of yourself reading or writing a book and you can use this type of highlighter uh, effect to kind of mark those specific sentences you want to have in your uh, video if it's travel video or if it's anything else uh, like that. I, this is just to give you an idea of how you can create something like this and I want to see if you use this in any of your videos. I really want to see how you put this together so make sure to leave your link in the uh, uh, DM on Instagram if you want me to check it out when you have her or when you have finished this type of effect. And the best effect will get a shout out in any of my videos as well, where I also show the type of paper effect that you created yourself. And also, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to click on that subscribe button to never miss any of the future videos. And with that said, let's jump over to LumaFusion and create this effect right here. So to make this effect, we would need a piece of paper. And in my opinion, an old piece of paper looks better on this effect than just a plain white letter or a plain white book. So what I did was to go over to Safari and I was searching for old paper script. And here you can see that we have a lot of old papers with uh, some uh, writing on them as well. And uh, you can choose whatever type of uh, uh, paper you want, but I'm also going to leave the one that I used in the description below. So once you download the paper that you want to use, the next thing you do is to go over to Affinity Photo. You can also use another app which is similar to Affinity Photo. I believe this also works with the Procreate or any other similar apps. But we're going to use Affinity Photo for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is to open up Affinity Photo. And once we open up Affinity Photo, we're gonna go on and we're gonna find the piece of paper that we just downloaded. Once we found that piece of paper, you can see here that this is uh, uh, just 2D, there's nothing 3D about this. So we're gonna try to make this 3D and uh, place it in the way that we want to uh, to have it just like you saw in the intro as well. And as you can see, the background here is white and I don't want a white background and this is going to affect the way that we make the 3D as well. So what I do is to go over to the um, erase brush here and I select background erase. Once I select background erase, I can simply choose which type of color I want to erase. And for this one, I'm gonna choose the white. And now that you see that I'm drawing on the white, as I get over the book here, it doesn't erase anything of the book, only the white which is selected. So I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna erase everything around this book here, and also make sure that you take the edges of the image here quite well as well. You really want to maybe increase this here and go fine tune around the edges like this. So now that we erase the background, let's move over to the selection tool here, the move tool, and now over to the filter studio here. And we're gonna select the perspective. So once we select the perspective, we can hide this and we can now take the corners of the image here and we can stretch them as we like. So as I stretch this, you can see that I add more of this 3D look to the image as well. So um, what we're gonna do is to place this maybe somewhere around here and here. Maybe something like that. 
we can go over to the FX here and we can try to enable the 3D. We can see how much that can affect it and uh, really not that much. So I think we're just gonna tune it a little bit like that. So we get a little bit of uh, more of a 3D look to it. You can also take outer shadows and you can also take the shadows here and uh, increase that to make to make it have more of that 3D look as well. You can play around with the type of uh, settings here as well if you if you'd like to do that. So I think this is fine now and again over to the move tool and now we're going to start to make that drawing line. But the first thing we're going to do is to move over to export and we're going to export this and we're going to export selection with background or you can choose without background, but the selection with background is the one we're gonna use for the next photos as well. So once you selected selection with background, you're gonna tap okay, and here we can choose, uh, uh, let's see, book highlights, and we're gonna just have untitled, and save. So now we saved the first base image. The next thing we're gonna do is to go over to the uh, layer studio here, and we're gonna select the image, and choose pixel layer. So now that we selected the pixel layer, make sure that you have the pixel selected here and we're gonna go over to the brushes. Once we moved over to the brushes, you can select a brush that you like. I'm gonna use uh, this one right here and I'm gonna adjust the size of it to something like that. Color here to more yellowish like that. And uh, once that is done, we can start to draw on the paper. So we can find different lines here you want to highlight. Uh, so let's start with, uh, with uh, this one right here. So I'm just gonna draw over it like that. And I'm gonna stop there. So it doesn't have to be a straight line. The rougher it is, uh, the more natural look it will have as well. So now that we finished drawing our line over the text, we're gonna go over to the layer studio here and make sure that the pixel is selected. And we're gonna tap on the three dots here on the left side. And we're gonna choose the blending mode to darken. By doing that, we'll remain the text as well and we don't really lose that much quality to the paper. So now that this is done, we can uh, go out again and over to the export button and export. And this time we need to make sure to have the, um, the background selected here. So over to export and we're going to choose selection with background. We are going to save this in the same folder here. So we're going to type two and done and save. And uh, the next thing we do now is to go back to the pixel layer and we zoom in back to the brushes, select the brush, and we can now choose a different line which we want to highlight. Let's take this word only. And once you've done that, make sure to go back, select the background and over to export and choose the area selection with background. And once this is finished generating, tap OK, change the name of the text here to three or whatever you want to call it and save again. So now we have our four photos, one with only the book and one with each of the lines as well. So now we're going to move over to Luma Fusion here. And here you can see that I have the project which you saw in the intro of this video as well. And this is the type we're going to make now. So we created a little bit of different um, kind of 3D look to the paper as well. So uh, let's go and find that and open. So now that we have these four images here, we're just gonna drag them over to the timeline and we're gonna start with uh, the first one here. Just drag it over there, make sure to select it on the first track. And we're gonna take number two and we can drag that just a little bit to the side here. Number three, same with that, and number four. 
can also stretch these out to uh, your desired length. Let's see, I was using uh, 8.23 seconds there. Let's go with 10. So now that we change the duration of the photos to 10 seconds, however, you can do this before you apply them to your timeline, as I mentioned in a lot of my videos as well, by going over to settings and then change the photo here from two seconds to 10. So the first thing we're gonna do is to kind of make the animation. And we're gonna make the animation to the first layer here, and we're gonna copy that animation over to the other three. So I'm just gonna hide the three layers here and go into edit on this one. Go to the beginning and over to frame and fit, make a keyframe and adjust the position where I want it to start. Let's say we're gonna have it start here. And now go to the end and just drag it to the position where you want it to be. So let's do a playback of that. Looks perfect. So now we have the animation on this and we can simply copy the animation, copy and uh, paste it on the remaining photos here. So now we have the animation to all of the photos here and we're gonna start to animate the yellow line. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go to the uh, second one here on track number two and the track number two is this bottom line here and the first thing we're going to start with is to go over to cropping and we're going to crop this in to where the crop is around the yellow line only just like that now the next thing we're going to do is to go to the beginning make a keyframe and we're going to go a couple of seconds forward in time here so we have a a clip or a photo which is 10 seconds long and we have uh, three lines there that means the best that means the best placement of the second keyframe of this is around three seconds so we have at zero and we have around three and the next one is from three to six and the last one is from six to ten so we're gonna go on and choose somewhere around uh, three here like that make a keyframe and on the first keyframe we're simply going to take this and drag it to the uh, left here like that so now we have the animation coming in like that and revealing the yellow line now we're going to go over to the next one here and we're going to do the exact same thing over to cropping and now we're going to start from this point, or we can go a little bit to the uh, left here around three seconds. Make a keyframe and take the cropping in again. Just like that. And place it above the yellow line. Like that. And we can place it to the left. And we can go towards the six second mark, make another keyframe, and we're gonna change the crop over to the text, just like that. So now we have the two lines here. So once we've done that, we're gonna move over to the top photo and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna go to the position here inside cropping where we see the top line and we're gonna do the cropping again so we're gonna make sure that we have everything cropped in like that see the right one here and we can also adjust the lines like this and once we have it in the position we want to have it we're gonna go to the point here where you see this is being revealed like that i'm gonna make a keyframe around here and uh, we're gonna take and make another keyframe right away to around this point and go back to the first one here and just drag this out of sight just to the left here like that so now if we go back here to the uh, beginning and do a playback of this you'll see that the text is being highlighted with this yellow line 
Another thing you can add to this type of a book highlighting animation as well is to go down to the bottom layer here and go over to color and effects, water droplet and add a Gaussian blur. Make sure to have the Gaussian blur at one. And uh, what that is doing is kind of giving you this depth of field. The focus point is around the line here instead of the entire book. But it's a little bit rough. So what you can also do is to go over to each of the different photos over to cropping and just simply adjust the uh, edge softness here and maybe take the cropping a little bit closer to the uh, to the text here. There is one thing that you can add as well and that is some color grading to make the paper look more like dark brown or uh, or orange-ish if you want to do that. I have a couple of LUTs here. Let's see. It looks a little bit better now but you see that I have the line here which is not color graded so I can take the colors here, copy that and paste that over to the next papers which is on the other tracks here. So now that we're done with all the changes and adjustments to this piece of paper here, let's do a playback to see how it looks. So there you have the text highlighter effect made in LumaFusion with a little bit of help from Affinity Photo. If you don't want this to be 3D, you can simply do the same thing in uh, LumaFusion as well, I guess, if you just put some lines there and use the cropping and then kind of round the edges and put some Gaussian blur or some fades on the lines as well. I believe you can do that with uh, with the uh, LumaFusion only, but the best result would be to get like a third party app like Affinity Photo or anything like that to kind of make those rough lines to make it look more realistic if that makes sense and with that said that's the end of the video let me know what you think of this effect in the comment section below also if you're new to this channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button that would be highly appreciated and notifications to never miss any future videos and i'll see you guys in the next video